All right, guys. Thank you all for jumping on tonight. Tonight is our first team call of the month of July. As you guys seen in the team group, I was going to do a live power hour. Hi, Angie. I feel like I haven't seen your face in forever, um, yes. except except on social media because I follow you like a. Or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I wanted to like as you guys seen today, I was going to do a live power hour, but I wanted to see if anyone's struggling in any areas, and so I kind of put this thing together. Mm -hmm. As you guys seen on the thing, on the photo, I said, live power hour, working through struggles together, right? So I kind of think that's something that we should start doing besides just live power hours because working with, like I, I talk about strengths and numbers all the time and working through our struggles together helps us get through things easier. Does that make sense? Like y'all know what it's like to have an obstacle come up or a crisis or a tragedy or something and you trying to get through it yourself it takes longer than it does if you have a friend or family member by your side helping you, right? So I think that's where, you know, this could be beneficial for us anywhere we're struggling in our businesses or even yeah. in our health and fitness. Anywhere that we're struggling, we could come together and we can work together on it so we could be there and support, of, support each other. Um, one thing that I am actually going to start doing, and so I want you guys to be aware of this, I'm going to start doing Success Club shout outs. Um, on our team calls because it, this business is all about changing lives. It's all about um, not just changing lives with the challenge pack, but that is the best way people could maximize their results, whether they're signing up as a coach or customer. So make sure that you guys edit the document in the file section under July Success Club Points. Moving forward from here, I know that um, Katie Lewis, she's on here. She got her first Success Club Points our first success club last month, which I'm very proud of her. Um, so make sure that you guys edit that because I want to, I want to give more recognition, more verbal recognition than just posts and stuff. So make sure that you guys get on that. So with that said, I hope you guys came to learn a little bit, work a little bit. Um, yes. Congratulations, Katie. Um, and do all that jazz. First off, Chelsea, your photo is so distracting. It makes me want to go to Hawaii and have a Mai Tai right now. Um, I just had to say that because she has like this lay on and all this flower stuff in her hair. I don't know what kind of partying you did over the weekend, but you should have invited me. That's all I'm saying. It was a retro tiki party. Oh, fun. Yeah. I was the hula girl on the dashboard of like the fifties cars. <laughs> nice. I love it. How fun. Yeah. Okay. So is Alicia on here right now? She's not. Hopefully she'll be on. Okay. So Alicia asked earlier, how do you go from building a relationship in business? <laughs> well, sorry about that. Uh, how do you go from building a relationship to getting them signed up and making it easy transition? That's where I'm currently getting stuck. Um, Tracy also seconds this one. So, and if any of you guys have any good tips too, I would love for you, you to, um, put in your, um, advice or your opinion too, but how you go from building a relationship to getting them signed up. It depends on the conversation. You guys all know, not every single conversation is going to go the same exact way. Some conversations you're leaning more towards the coaching opportunities, some more towards the challenge packs, some more, um, a free clean eating group or whatever. But I think how you transition it and you get them committed it's all about asking the questions it's all about finding out their goals and their whys and their struggles and what's important to them when you start asking questions and helping people find their truth this is huge guys this helps with your coaches as well as your prospects or your challengers you have to help them find their truth what it is they are looking for because if they're looking for you know, they really want to lose 10 pounds, but why do they want to lose 10 pounds just to look good in a bikini over the summer? Do they want to lose 10 pounds because they're tired of squeezing into their jeans and it cutting into their hips? Do they want to lose um, the weight so they could keep up with their children? What is the reason why behind their goal and what have they been doing so far to help them? When you guys get people talking about their goals and what they want to achieve, whether they're a coach prospect or a challenge prospect, it helps them open up their eyes to see the big picture. Because if you just say, hey, I see you're interested in the 21-day fix, here's all the information, want to sign up, they're going to be like, 
okay, so I went from just meeting you to all this information about the 21 day fix, not even knowing what they really want to achieve. Does that make sense? Like think about yourself. Like if someone just gave you all this information, say you're going to go buy a new car, but you don't really know why you want a new car. You don't know like what things you want about a new car, right? You go to a car lot and they say, okay, well you're here for a car. Here, here's a Mazda Miata. There you go. It's $6,000. And you're like, but I don't even know if a Mazda, I don't even know why I said a Mazda Miata. I know we're all like classier than Mazda Miata. I should have said something better, but, um, and you're like, I don't even know why I'd want a Mazda Miata or a minivan or a Porsche or whatever. And you're like, how could this even work for me? I didn't even really think about that. And then you walk away, you're done. But when you start asking questions like, how many, how many family members do you have? How, many, how, how often do you travel long distances? Do you like to go on road trips? Do you need something that gets good gas mileage? Do you need something that fits two or three car seats? Like these are the things that you ask, I mean obviously not the car questions, but these are the things that you need to be talking to people about because it opens their eyes. And when, when you talk to them about signing up as a coach or signing up as a challenger, their eyes are already open. They're already having that vision in their mind what is possible and where they want to go. So I think that is where the transition happens um, easier because they're already thinking about it. They're already excited about it because we all know what it's like when we're thinking about a goal, right? Like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get down two pant sizes. Like, ooh, I, I'd feel so good and confident and take more selfies or, you know, whatever. We, we feel good. Um, so get them asking. Um, Dana asked, I'm always down for growing your network. Is hashtags the only way to get to meet new people? I like and follow, but then I'm following too many and not enough following me. Okay. Now, sorry, my, my child's coming in here. Too. Yes, you can pour that in the bowl all by yourself. You don't have to whisper. Say it. Hurry. Okay. Don't judge. My, my child is having cereal as a snack. Okay. There you go. Put it back. Put it back. Wait, wait, wait. Put it back. Hey. Okay. Now I have cereal in my office. Okay. See, if I'm a single mom and I could get work done at the same time as being a parent, nobody or no one has any excuses. Um, okay. So as far as meeting new people, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be obsessed with how many people follow you back because the more obsessed we get, the more like it takes over, right? You're like, Oh my God, I lost one follower today. Oh my gosh, someone stopped liking my page. And then you start dwelling on it, right? The more you focus on how can I add value to people? What can I give people? What can I offer people that they cannot take their eyes off my page? So when you're using hashtags, Dana, you, you have stuff. I promise you, you have stuff. So when, you, when you're thinking about searching hashtags, right, you're connecting with people, your intentions are going to make new friends, right? You're searching hashtags, whether they're your struggles, the things that you like, the, the hobbies that you like to do, what kind of lifestyle you have, things like that. Those are the hashtags you search. But when they go back to your page, they're going to see right away what kind of person you are, right? So like the things that you struggle with. So I always post tips about hypothyroidism and getting my water intake in and recipes, quick and easy, simple recipes because I'm a busy mom. So I can't spend all day long in the kitchen making like a lasagna from scratch. Um, things like that. I showcase workout moves, things like that are quick, simple videos or pictures that people could come right away, get to know who I am right away. And so they don't have to do a lot of reading or searching or scrolling, like scrolling through millions of cat pictures to actually find out who I am. So that's why posting and connecting go hand in hand. Because when you connect with someone, whether you send them a direct message or a Facebook message or whatever, they're going to go through to your social media site to find out who you are. And they're going to find out right away whether they connect with you or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess I just, I'm not really like so obsessed with like, oh, I lost somebody. I mean, yeah, it hurts my feelings a little bit, but I just, I feel like, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm posting good stuff, but then at the same time, I'm like, okay, how do I like, like cause Instagram, it doesn't seem to be as personal to me as like Facebook. So I'll message people, but then it's like, 
is I haven't gotten too far. I've only got a few people from Instagram, you know, actually interested in the program, but it just seems, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Well, you aren't doing anything wrong. I mean, you are just developing your tra your traction with Instagram. So don't think that you're going to gain like a thousand followers overnight. Um, we're, we're all not Shalene Johnson here. That, do that doesn't happen. No, how, no matter how good our content is. Right. Um, First off, just be consistent. That is the best thing that you can do with your social media, whether it's adding to your network on social media or your posting, be consistent because we all know what it's like to be super consistent and then our followers are going up one, two, three every day, right? And we're consistent, we're consistent. And then we go on a family vacation or we're super sick so we take two, three days off. And then all of a sudden our traction starts going, like starts dwindling or our likes or our comments start dwindling because we're not showing up on people's Facebooks or Instagram a lot. So having that consistency is really important. So if you guys do get sick, I suggest any time that you guys have a good social media post, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, screenshot it so you can reuse it. So anytime that you are sick or you are on vacation or um, you're just at that point in the day where you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't posted anything all day long. I have no idea what to post. Then you can go back to your records and be like, oh wait, this one got really good traction. I will post this fit tip again. Does that make sense? So keep consistent. Don't get down on it. And just make sure that you're constantly connecting with these people. Like your new friends on Instagram, they should be on a list, whether you use Teamsy or Act or piece of paper and pen, whatever you use, they should be on a list. So you should be intentionally going to their pages every day and following up, connecting with them, things like that. That way they will see that you're actually there, not just for a sell. Like you're there genuinely to be in their life and which will make them want to follow you and connect with you better. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, there's so many more people on Instagram. So I think that was my problem is I wasn't making a list of new people was following. I'm like, oh, well, I'll see them. Right. And then I get to be like following 500 people. And I'm like, oh shit, I lost them. Right. Right. <laughs> so like, yeah, that helps. I need to get on TV like ASAP. Uh, <laughs> well, there's a 30 day trial that you can do on TMZ. Um, Okay. You also asked, how do you decide what po boosts to post? Okay, there's many different controversies. I, I don't want to say controversies. There's different um, opinions out there what to post um, or what to boost. Now, me personally, I only boost things that are not opportunity specific. Now, what I mean by that is I, do, I will not boost a coaching opportunity post or challenge group invite post because I don't know if the people that I'm paying to see this, I'm going to connect with. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know if a bunch of people that are completely opposite of me are going to see this and then we're not going to connect at all. And although you can, you can target it to your target audience, still other people are able to see it. The only things that I boost personally, I've, I don't know if you guys seen, I have a three minute ab workout video that I've done to like Selena Gomez and like, mermaid leggings. So I did like something where I boosted something where I'm adding value, right? So I did a workout video. Um, I've boosted um, self-love posts or things that make me me, like showcasing me a vulnerable post. So when people see it, they're like, oh my gosh, I totally relate to her story. Boom. Like a like right away, a connection right away because they relate. Um, those are what I have felt um, work for me. Now, um, Jenny Rearson, who is also part of Misfit Republic, she, she does boost her challenge group invites and her coaching opportunity invites. And she does really well at them too. So I think it's all about finding out what works for you. You know, like just because you do one and it doesn't work doesn't mean that's what you have to continually do. Like try it out. Try spending five bucks on one and seeing what works for you. And make sure that you target it specifically to your brand though. Because the first time I did it, I got a bunch, like, I don't even remember what I did, but I got nothing but um, Spanish speaking people from Kenya. And I'm like, I didn't even know people spoke Spanish in Kenya. Like, how did, I don't know what I did wrong. I'm not that Facebook retarded, I promise, but I, I don't know what I did wrong. Um, so make sure that you target it. Like, I put, I put, um, you know, for likes or interests, I put target and tattoos and yoga 
and EDM music and um, music festivals, things like that. So because when I, when I never put tattoos, people would come to my page and be like, oh my God, you ruined your body and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I didn't pay for you to come over here and <laughs> tell me about my tattoos, dang it. Um, but make sure you make it target specific based on the people that you want to work with. Um, when you do bo boost your post, but try it out, see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, maybe try it again in two, three months. And if it does work, continue on doing something like that. Um, have I ever done giveaways? Um, the only giveaway I've ever done was when I do my mind and body, um, challenge groups. And some of you might actually have been in these. Um, I've done like, I give away personal development when we're doing our PIO group. And like it, the first one I've done was the gift of imperfection. If you buy a challenge pack, a pile challenge pack. But, um, I know people that have done, um, that have done like tank tops or water bottles or things like that. Um, are they worth the effort? Wait, are they worth the effort if I give them away to only people who sign up, like do a drawing at the end of the round? But see, really what happened was that I was doing them for likes at first. I was like, oh, here's a cool cup. You know, and then, yay, I got a bunch of likes and then half the people were actually inboxing me over a stupid cup. They already had a coach, but they were like begging me for this cup. And I'm like, this is stupid. This is not getting me. You know, this is not what I was trying to do. I don't want to like if it's not a potential customer, you know? So, right. um, I was like, well, maybe if I do something where I'm like, okay, so the next five, five people that sign up or whatever, like in the challenge group, if I do like a competition in the challenge group, then I don't want to be just giving away money for nothing. I just, right. I just didn't know if it had anybody tried it. If it well, I don't know if anyone on here, but Allison Talmadge does, uh, she does the get the tank top giveaways at the end of the challenge group. Like anytime that someone um, checks in daily or encourages someone else daily, um, she marks points. And so the person with the most points, they get the tank top at the end. Tracy, did you, have you done the same thing? Yes. I, um, I was doing challenge or giveaways a lot for my challenge groups and they, they do work really well. Like I'll give away, um, like workout gear. We have like a five below. And so I'll go get like, um, discs or so, anything, you know, that's not going to cost me a whole lot of money or I'll give them um, Shakeology packets or something, but they have to go through this point system. And, and I post that point system in the beginning of the challenge group. And so if, um, you know, whoever has the most points at the end of the challenge group, then, you know, it, then I draw a name or, or whoever wins, you know, but it does work. Um, but then I also found that some of them, depending on the challenge group and who is participating, um, we're only doing it for the gift. They weren't doing it for their health. So, um, would you mind sharing that uh, tracker or that point system with us? Yeah, awesome. Because mm -hmm. I think people could benefit from that, especially if your challenge groups get kind of quiet. Then you can be like, "Okay, girls or everyone here, you know, we're in this to feel good about ourselves, but to give you guys an incentive to check in, this is what we can do." Um, okay, Jen, Jen White. Where's Jen White? She's not even on here and she wants to know about Summit. <laughs> okay, um, who's going to Summit on here? Teresa Tracy. Oh my gosh, that's it. Girls, get your booties to Summit. Okay, um, I'm not going to talk about Summit on here since there's not a lot of people going on Summit, but I'm sure I will make a video soon. Um, dry, bring dry fit clothing, fans, lots of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot AF in Nashville. That's all I got to say. Um, it's sold out this year. Um, yes and no. So technically you can still get on the wait list and they will pull you off. There is a wait list, but Dana, if you come, I'll squeeze you in my house. Just saying, or anybody on here, if you make the decision tonight or going forward, if you come, we'll, we'll, we'll find you a spot. Okay. Ever said my struggles are getting people to sign up. <laughs> they say they want to and they're happy about moving forward and then they say it's too expensive or husband won't let them. This is why um is Deborah 
Okay. Um, everyone that's asking questions is not even on tonight. And this is why it, it's um, important to ask questions again. And when it comes to spouses not being supportive, um, this is hard to tackle because I have been there and I am a bit of a rebel. So what I say is I relate to them. I say, you know what? My husband had a really hard time with me signing up with a $200 challenge pack when there was times where we couldn't buy diapers, you know, like, and as a mom, I don't know if you felt this way too. Like, this is what I'll say to them. Like, I have a hard time spending money on myself anyways. When I have extra money, it goes straight to my kid. Like, for whatever, like, popsicles, socks, whatever, it goes straight to him. So I had a really hard time. But then I realized, like, this is the, this is the thing that I needed to save my life so I could be a better mom for my son. And my husband didn't agree with it because he didn't understand the importance it was to me. So I kind of did it without him. Not saying by any means you should do that because I'm not trying to like cause a bunch of divorces here for Beachbody. Good. Carl would like kill me. Um, but I say, you know, like I, if you can't, if you cannot explain your importance, like how much this means to you, to him, then you need to think of a different way to come up with the income. Or maybe you should say, um, I'm going to become a coach and pay the money back that I sign up with because not only do I want to change my life, I want to help other people ch change their lives. So you relate to where you can, but you know, like these men, there's too many men around here. I, I hate to say it and I hope no women are this unsupportive, but there's too many men that I'm hearing that are not supportive or not um, allowing even if they do have the money, because they just don't get it. Even with personal development, I've heard spouses say no for women getting personal development. And my ex was one of them because he thought if I bettered myself, that means that he needed to better himself and he was content staying the way he was, which is neither here nor there. But they just have to realize that just because you want to be a better you doesn't mean anyone around you needs to work on themselves. It's just meaning that you need to improve yourself. And um, there's actually a very good um, webinar that Andrea Crowder and Jeremy Crowder did, and I believe Blair and Kyle Dreesen both did one as well, that you can send them um, to their spouses if they have unsupportive spouses. Um, now, as far as having people really excited and then they, them falling off, everyone's going to have this. We all have had that conversation or 10 where people are super excited. They're super pumped up, whether they're going to join a coaching opportunity or a challenge group or whatever. And then their radiator goes out or they lose their job or this happens or that happens. And then they have to wait. And then their excitement kind of dies down, right? Has that ever happened to anyone except for me? Okay. Well, here's the thing. This is why it's so important to continue that conversation with them and continue that excitement. Like bring up their why. If it's a coaching opportunity, bring up their why all the time. Like this girl, Kayla, I'm talking to, she works freaking three jobs and still she's broke as a joke. Like she can't, she can't get above ground to save her life. And every time that she's just about to sign up, something else happens. And so I'm keeping her excited. I know how excited she is to do this opportunity. Plus she wants to do the 21 day fix because let's face it, it's an awesome program. So every time like something like crumbles and she's like feeling defeated, I always say, well, when you sign up as a coach, this is a, a means to an end. You know, like you don't have to struggle anymore once you are able to become a coach. So when you say things like that and they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So, and it keeps them moving forward and keeps them having, hanging on to that hope. Does that make sense? So always keep them excited, even though shit hits the fan. Cause we all know what it's like. We all know what it's like living paycheck to paycheck or, you know, having money. And then all of a sudden it goes out the window. Right. But let me tell you this. We also know what it's like when we want something so bad and we seem like we can't afford it. We all know what it's like cause we make that shit happen. Right. Whether it's like a random girls weekend or a new pair of jeans or a frappuccino. We know what it's like to be broke, but if you want something bad enough, you find a way to make it happen. But they won't find a way to make it happen if that excitement dies out. I promise you that. So keep them excited and keep talking to them. Regardless, people never leave your list. You should never make someone, or ne never let people leave your list unless they block you, unfriend you, banish you from 
social media. Okay. Um, Ashley said, do you have a monthly calendar you fill out ahead of time? Do you do the same monthly? Yes. Okay. So it's called a monthly marketing plan. And I don't have my calendar in here, but every Monday is a different group, a different thing starting every Monday. And it's always the same. So my coaches, my challengers, everyone could expect the same thing. I plan it ahead of time so I could pass it on to my leaders so they can pass it down to theirs if they're wanting to do a team-wide thing. Every first Monday, I do a new coach training group. Every second Monday is the clean eating group. And yes, Dana, mine are on my challenge tracker app now. <laughs> Every third Monday is the start of the 21 day fix prep week. Fourth Monday is either invite to a, the accountability group or a, and the coaching sneak peek. I'm on a Zoom. Oh my gosh, my child. Um, so yes, I plan it monthly ahead of time here. Actually, I'm going to go get it because I want to show you guys. Oh no, I unplugged the wrong thing. Hold on, bear with me. You guys get to travel with me for a second. What did you want? Milk. Okay, so I have, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm getting milk for my child. Um, I'll pour it because it's full. There you go. It's too full. I'm sorry. Mother duty calls, guys. I apologize. Okay. So when I make my monthly calendar, I highly suggest that you guys get a planner. Like whether it's um, a goal planner, Amazon has like these amazing, oh my, sorry. My child is just pushing my buttons now. Um, so I have this one that I've never even used. Um, these have like um, little dividers of months and stuff. And then they have sections where it says like May goals, don't forget important dates, special events, things like that. I used to use that and break down my goals and stuff, but I have separate separate notebooks for my goals, separate notebooks for my to-do list, separate notebooks for the people I contact. I didn't want it all in one place. So now I just have a calendar which shows, let me go so you guys can see better. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it shows like the month. So it shows the month. Everything is highlighted in a different color. So I'm going to tell you, like, all my, all my Zooms or all my um, group things are highlighted in orange. So you'll see, like, on Monday's new coach training, clean eating group, 21-day fix, sneak peek. And then, like, this one was in March. So it sh also shows when there was a launch for 21-day or 22-minute hardcore. And then all the pink is team calls. So whether they're my diamond calls, my <clears throat> live power hours, my team calls, and then I do my Northwest coach call highlighted in green and then yellow is when I want my goals. So like I have my goal success club five by the fifth success club 10 by the 10th. And then, um, blues is, um, personal stuff. So like this month I went to Maui and then I did a misfit hot yoga night. So I schedule things out on my calendar, personal and business. So that way you are flexible on what you can do and what you can't do. And like, say someone wants to meet up for coffee to talk coaching, then you can look at your calendar and be like, oh, okay, we can do it here. But then on the week, it breaks down and you can actually schedule like call with Teresa, call with Lauren, um, grocery shopping, team, send team email, check team email, um, check national wake up call, things like that. So you can actually break them down into hour specific. Does that make sense? Um, I know, see, here's the thing. I go back and forth with scheduling and especially with moms or people that work um, besides Beachbody because not every day you're going to have a set schedule. Like, let's face it, and especially if you are a mom or a grandma and you have another job, there's no way that you can plan out to a T hours. 
So if you cannot stick to a set schedule on your breakdowns, Break down the priority things that you need to get done those certain days, and then you can do it when you have time. Even if you have to separate your power hours to 30-minute increments or 10-minute increments, do it, but space it out and plan it out on your calendar. Does that make sense? Especially if you have little ones or even older ones. We all know that, we all know that kids are needy, even like 25-year-olds. I was needy when I was 25. Okay. I'm still needy. What, what am I talking about? Okay. Um, I work three 12 hour shifts a week besides BB. So my days off, I am balls to the wall office time. Oh yeah. I could imagine. Imagine what? I signed up first and told him after I signed up. See Tracy. See, that's a spouse thing, right? Okay. I know I talked a lot and I wanted to do some work with you guys while we talked, but I wanted to cover all the questions before we started working. But one thing I want you guys to work on right now, or I want us to work on, is Dana talked about um, building relationships. So I want you guys all pull up your Instagram right now, unless you're on your phone, on Zoom, because that'll be kind of hard. Um, if you are on your Zoom, then I want you to take notes on your phone. So pull up your Zoom or your Instagram, and I want you to scroll, like not even scroll, like maybe see uh, nine or 12 photos. And I want you to ask yourself, does this explain who I am if someone does not know me? And would I want to connect with me if I needed help? Because if not, then you have to start incorporating things that would answer your question as a yes. We, we get so focused on this idea of perfection. Every post has to be perfect. Every invite has to be perfect. Every photo, every font, every color, blah, 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 everything has to be perfect. I'm telling you guys this. That is not true. I think I was actually, Teresa, are you still on here? I think I was actually on... Um, a Zoom with Teresa, we were talking about a coaching sneak peek and how she was going to make videos. And she said that she came home drained one day and she was like, I was going to make them that day. I worked all day. Like this girl busts her butt at work, right? And she's like, I just couldn't do it. And so I told her, there's this girl, well, she used to be a local coach here, Megan E. Wilson. She, we were at a Seattle Market Council dinner and she like, she's, you know, top three coach. And she was telling us about her coach sneak peek. She just had a newborn baby, right? And she was like, crap, all my coaches want to do a coaching sneak peek. None of them know how to do it. So she just won't wing, wing it, wing it. She wing it. That's weird. Um, <laughs> anyways, she totally winged it, if, if that's the right verbiage. Um, and she said that she has never had more um, people connect with her, more people sign up than she did in this group because of this. One group, one video, she was nursing. The next, she was burping her baby. All of them, she was like a hot mess. Like she was not perfect. Her hair was not curled. She did not just spend two hours on her makeup. She was living the life of her design, right? She works. She messages people when she was nursing. She messages people when she's burping or watches training videos. She's playing with her kid, like her kids are playing, her older kids were playing in the background in one of her videos. Like she was showcasing what real life is. When people are like, oh my gosh, I can actually do that. Because when we put perfection out there, then there's a lot of people, a lot of good people that would make amazing coaches that would be like, I can never do that. I can never do those tech jumps that Angie does. Damn, she makes them look easy. I can never do that. I can never do that. But then when you're like, okay, so anytime that anyone says, oh my gosh, you make that move look so simple or something. I, I always have to respond with, girl, you don't know how many takes I had to do to get that move down. You don't, you don't know what I had to edit out. And sometimes I won't edit it out or I do like a little boogie woogie in, in the middle to show that I'm real, right? Like we have to show people that it's okay to be you. It's okay not to be perfect. You don't have to spend so much time and energy trying to perfect the perfect post. If it sucks, take it down and never use it again. 
but don't waste your time because your time is so valuable when it comes to connecting with people, building relationships. That's where you should spend the focus of your time. Not trying to perfect the perfect pose in a selfie or the perfect post about inviting or something like that. You guys have heard me say it before. You can say all the wrong thing or all the right things to the wrong person and they will not sign up. You can say all the wrong things to the right person and they're going to stand by your side. It doesn't matter how you deliver it. I mean, it does to an extent. But don't put so much pressure on yourself that it has to be perfection. So on your social media, I want you to think, am I adding value? Every day, this is something that you should be doing every day. Am I adding value? Did I share part of my story? Do they knew, know who I am outside of Beachbody? Have I shared a struggle that I'm going through? Am I showcasing who I really am? Adding value is huge. You could think about all your posts. Is this helpful? Is this actually going to change someone's life? And yes, it can change someone's life if you make them laugh or if it's a good tip or something. I have to say, Katie posted this video where she, she had a watermelon in her tank top and she took it out. It was like she was pregnant and then she had a watermelon. It was so funny. And it like, it made me laugh stupid, ugly tears. Like it was that ridiculous. That kind of shit changes people's life because it puts them in a better mood, right? So y'all know what it's like when you're having a crummy day and you're maybe on your way home from work or you're stuck in traffic or whatever and you're, don't be stuck in traffic scrolling social media. Shh. Um, anyways, and you're scro scrolling social media and you see one of these like ridiculous puppy videos and they're chasing a lemon or something and it just makes you laugh. It makes you feel so good. And you're like, you forget about all the shitty shit that happened during the day, right? We do, we can do that same stuff. I'm not saying if you're not funny, don't, don't force it. Cause that would be awkward for everybody. But if you are embrace it and whatever you are, if you have, if you are great at making videos, like Teresa's really awesome at making videos and she gets great traction when she talks to people. So is Dana. Like embrace the things that you're good at. Try it out if you haven't tried it out before. And if you don't get good traction, doesn't mean that you're not good at it. Just means maybe you need to try it at a different time, right? Maybe a different set of audience is on later in the day or earlier. Maybe you need to try different things. Um, Try different recipes. Um, ex like, um, I don't know where I was going with this. Uh, search Pinterest for different tips. Like, I always search Pinterest for hypothyroidism tips, hypothyroidism recipes. I share them. I share different ingredients that help hypothyroidism um, that are in Shakeology. Every time I do a Shakeology post, I'm like, oh, by the way, all my hypothyroid warriors, Shakeology. Ah. Not just like, hey, you want to buy some Shakeology? I give them a reason to. I share. I add value. So anything that you struggle with, anything that you've overcome, anything that has helped you, share it. Share it in different tips, different ways. Be engaging too. Ask questions. It doesn't need to be health and fitness related, but it can be. Like, I always ask, like, if you had to live without pizza or tacos, which one would it be? Everyone loves that one. Or you say cake and ice cream. Or what kind of workout shoes are your favorite? Get people involved in your page. Don't just feel like you are the only one benefiting from it or the only one um, delivering advice from it, right? Like today. Okay, so here, here's, here's something that some of you guys are going to hate on me for. Uh, so you all know my distilled water with lemon salt, right? So one of my coaches, actually Shauna Michaels, who is not on here, but she posted on my tip, my adding value post today saying that it's not good to drink distilled water all the time, only when you're cleansing. And I was like, 
well, thank you for letting everybody know because that's good, right? Because I obviously don't know everything and I'm never going to know everything, but it's nice when other people have feedback because they're contributing too. So it's not just you. That's why it's so good to be engaging in your page as well, because then it gets other people talking and other people from their page sees your page and so on and so on. So it's like free referral service when you engage. Um, what about, uh, oh, I have a question for everybody. Last week, not this week, last week, did you do a Transformation Tuesday photo and a Throwback Thursday photo? Who did both? Angie? Angie's the only one that did both? Well, way to go, Angie. Okay, ladies, tonight is Tuesday. Guess what you're going to be doing? Oh, Dana's like, I'm on it, I'm on it. It's all right, Ashley, you are forgiven. Yeah, Kendra, good job, girl. Do a t Transformation Tuesday post tonight about you. Everybody, yes. Chelsea, before you go night-night, because you already look tired. <laughs> and then on Thursday, do one that is mentally or physically, or mentally or emotionally changing. Tonight, focus on the physical. Was working on mine before the call. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And I know sometimes, like last week, I'll be honest. My hand wasn't raised with Angie's. It wasn't. So good job, Angie. <laughs> but that is, that is another way to share your story so people can see like, oh my gosh, she's been doing this for how long and she, she's made this commitment, she's made this progress already. And you can share the struggles. Don't just make it perfect. Don't just make it look easy. Share the things that you've gone through because people relate and people connect that way and people are not scared off that way. Does that make sense? Like how many times have you guys posted about emotionally eating or eating your feelings or uh, binging on 4th of July weekend or something and like everyone was like, oh my God, I did too or I'm the same way or I eat my feelings or when I'm on my period, I eat all the chocolate in the world or blah, blah, blah. People relate to that because we as women know what it's like, right? Like I, I cannot understand a woman that doesn't meet their feelings, especially when mother nature calls or aunt flow calls, whatever you want to call it. Like, I'm like, what? My hormones kick in and I just want all the wine, all the chocolate, all the nachos. Just give it all to me. And I share that because people relate. So don't be afraid to relate and share your struggles because this journey, your health and fitness journey is not easy. We're not showing it's easy. This is not a quick fix. This is not some stuff you could wrap around your stomach and lose five inches. This is not a pill that you take every three hours and it eats all your fat. I don't even know if that, they make one, but if they do, let me know. Um, but this is not a quick fix. This is a lifestyle change. We're changing for the better. We're changing unhealthy habits into a healthy lifestyle to better our lives, to better our children's lives, to better our future. And we're showing that it's not easy. We're showing that we do struggle. We, showing, we show that our workouts do hurt and make us cry and make us uh, need to stretch a little longer or make us soak in baths or whatever or make us want to scream at Autumn and throw the TV out the window. Don't showcase perfection. People don't want perfect. People don't want easy. I mean, yes, they do. But if you had easy, it wouldn't mean that much to you. You guys know what it's like when you are finished accomplishing something and it was hard and you're proud. That feeling that you get, no one else can give you that feeling inside, but you get it because of all the hard work you did. Maybe it's an art project. Maybe it's losing weight, whatever it is, you know that feeling. And so share it, share it with other people. Don't be afraid to hide or don't be afraid and hide because then people won't know who you are. I actually had a coach prospect ask me, and I want to share this with you guys. She said, okay, so there's a lot of Beachbody coaches. I've been doing a lot of research on Beachbody coaches. There's over, over 400,000 Beachbody coaches right now. Don't know if all of you guys are aware of this. She goes, is the market going to be saturated by the time I sign up? And I said, what do you mean is it going to be saturated? She goes, well, I already know that uh, Beachbody helps, or coaches help Canada and United States, right? And I said, correct. She said, well, is 
is everybody going to be taken by a Beachbody coach already? And I said, here, there is 400,000 people in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Do you think if you scattered everyone in Tulsa, I can't even say Tulsa, Oklahoma, around Canada and United States, that they would help everybody? No, absolutely not. There is a ton, I don't even know, a billion, a bazillion, I don't even know if that's the number. There's a lot of people out there. And the way people are going to connect with you is through your story. There's no way that this market is ever going to be saturated. Because there's always going to be someone that needs someone's help, that needs your help, because they relate to you the most. They need you, but they won't know that they need you until you come out there. You need to come out there with your struggle. You need to come out there with your story. And you need to come out there and search for them and ask them to be your friend. That's all it is. But you have to be positive about it. You have to believe in yourself. You have to have confidence. I know a lot of us, it, that's the area where we struggle the most, right? Confidence. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. That's why personal development is key, guys. Even, in, even if you read 30 minutes a day, sometimes our confidence just is not how it should be. That's why these little things above your desk are important called post-its that say things that you need to remind yourself on a daily basis. I believe in myself. Who still has this? Who was on that call? Mm, Tracy? Yeah. Yay! Dana? Yay! Okay. So if you guys were not on the call, I want you to write a post-it right now. I believe in myself. Put it on your phone, Angie. <laughs> Put it somewhere. You guys grab something. I believe in myself. And I want you guys to read that every single morning. Put it where you can see it when you wake up. Maybe, maybe get a shit ton of post-its and just post them all around. My son is hearing the S-bomb all night long tonight. So I'm excited. But po post it right next to your bed. Post it on your mirror. Post it down the hallway. You know, one thing about a Super Saturday Blair Dreesen talked about, she said, people may think it's funny that you have post-its hanging around your house, right, that says you are beautiful or I believe in myself or this and that, right? But the one thing she said that, like, pulled on my heartstrings, she has a teenage daughter. And she's like, imagine your teenage daughter walking around reading those things, right? I believe in myself. I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am enough. Or what about your girlfriends or your mom or anyone else that comes over and sees those? They may giggle at first, right? But the more they walk by them, the more they're going to say it. The more they're going to start believing it. So do it. Don't just do it for you. Do it for the people that come over. Do it for your kids. Otherwise, if, they, if they're not old enough to read, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's a color party. Let's, let's have fun with all these post-its. And that will be fun, too. Maybe, maybe you can have them say, out th say things that they want on the post-its. That will be fun, too. Get them involved. Because this journey is not just about you. It's about your kids. It's about your future. Right? So get people involved. And don't get discouraged. If you hear a no, don't get discouraged if you gain five pounds or 10 or 15 pounds. Shit happens. Life happens. You know you can lose it again. You know that you can gain that confidence again. You know that you can get a yes. But you have to keep moving forward. You have to keep going. Every time I feel like I'm failing, like there's days where my son does not listen to me. I'll be, I'll be completely honest. It's hard. It's hard as a single mom when. You're, you're trying to get him away from the PlayStation 4 and you're trying to do work and, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I've had enough of Minecraft. I don't know what to do and he's not listening. All, all I'm hearing is no, no, no. And I'm feeling like I'm feeling as a mom, but if I don't do my work, I'm feeling like I'm feeling as a coach. And then what do we do? We get hard on ourselves. And then we roll in a corner and cry. I do. Eat my feelings and chocolate. And I get down on myself and I'm like, no, you know what? It's a, it's a bad day. Everyone has bad days. Doesn't mean this is a bad life. Doesn't mean tomorrow's not going to be awesome. So what do I do? I shut down from work. I go hug my kid and I go play with my kid. Because obviously if he's yelling no and he's screaming at me and all he wants is a PlayStation, he needs mom. And guess what? I'm able to give that to him. I'm able to shut down and focus on him. 
And that's what we should be able to do. Anytime that you're feeling the worst, reach out to those that love you the most. Whether they're your kids, your best friend, your significant other, whoever. Because those people will lift you up without you even having to ask them. Okay? And maybe it's someone on this team. And that's okay because we're here for each other through thick and thin no matter what. So if you ever need to reach out to somebody, do not be afraid. Okay? All right. We didn't do much work. But I do want you guys to go over your Instagram and your social media and answer those questions for yourself. Am I adding value? Am I showcasing who I am? Is people connecting with me through my photos? Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions before we do the famous selfie? Bing. No questions? Okay. Well, I'm going to awkwardly edge my recording. So thank you all for watching the recording that's watching. And